Christopher Carrington with a new GMU student tutorial and today we're going to be learning about JDBC and basically what that means is it's letting you connect your Java programs to a database so you see this all the time and I'm just going to show you a couple of examples of what you will be able to actually do by the time you are done with these tutorials we are going to start off slow. The first couple videos we make are all going to be in the main method. They're just going to be making simple connections to a database, maybe showing some results or inserting some data. But then as we move forward, we're actually going to take what we've learned from JDBC and add it into the MVC structure, set it up with JSPs and servlets and all those kinds of things to show how to correctly do this in the real world. So if you just want a quick refresher of JDBC, you only have to watch the first couple videos that I have because they'll all be done in the main method. They'll be showing you the basics and how to use it. But then if you want to take this to the next level and learn how to do it in the real world, just keep on watching and I'm going to teach you everything we need to know. We're even going to be making requests with Ajax. It's going to get really cool. So first I have an example of a dummy site that I made to show you what you'll be able to learn from me. And then I have an example of ESPN that will show you how other people utilize JDBC. So if we go to ESPN, you'll see all of these videos for first take, which is a pretty funny show. But um, so you have first take and if you click any one of these videos, it's going to show you that particular video and all of its information. So if we click this one and I'll mute it so that we don't hear anything, but just look at what's in the address bar. You have a directory here called video and then you have clip, which is a servlet that it's calling and then it's asking for the ID of this number. So just look at this part. This is the main important part. It's looking for this servlet and it's looking for this ID and this number. Now, if you look at what I did over here, you will look, I have this little dummy program, that's me, but you will see we only see information for Chris Carrington. And how do we know that? Because we're looking for this servlet with this ID and this number. So if you look at this, you will see the title for this video, you'll see the duration, all of this information, you'll even see the video, the description, tags, all of these things. So every time you click a different video, it'll only show you the video for that ID. So this one stops, ends in 215. If we go back and we look at a different video, this one's ending in 405. So this is the information for this video. So that's how you get information from the database by just looking for a particular video. So if we look at my MySQL database, and if we go into my PHP my admin, and we go GMU student, and let's go to my players table, SQL, you're going to learn how to do all this stuff. This is just a demonstration to see why you want to do this and how you would do this. But if I look at all the rows in my players table, you will see in the first row I have an ID of one, Chris Carrington, and then all the information about me. So when you type this into the URL and you ask for this ID of one, we are going to write a program that will ask to only see the information for the player with the ID of one. So you get only that name, only that position, only that height. Only that name right here, only that position, only that height. That's how you do it. So this is all a JDBC request to a MySQL database to only see information for this individual player. So what happens if we wanted to see player two? Then it automatically changed, everything changes. The name changes, the position changes, the height changes, everything changes. So this is a particular MySQL query that's asking for only the player information for this ID. You're gonna learn how to do that with me. Then we have another MySQL query over here that's looking for all of the names in the roster. So if you look here, the MySQL query is only looking for the names and it goes through and it looks for all the names. The reason we do this with a MySQL query instead of hard coding it in there is so that if we ever add a new roster player, a seventh person, it would immediately pop in right there. Very cool stuff. So then again, if you click Jacob Morgan, you'll go to the fourth person. If you click me again, you'll go to the first person. So here's an example of two different MySQL queries happening on the exact same page and exactly how you would do it in the real world and exactly what I'm going to show you. But then let's say that we wanted to actually insert information into the database. Instead of just showing the information, now we want to get a little more advanced and learn how to insert things. Well, I'm going to teach you how to do that too. But all you would do is you would look at my comments table. So here's the players table, and this is all the information in the players table. So I made another table called comments. So if you do the SQL query on here, 
and just type in comments, you will see that we have a couple columns. First, you have an ID column of all the ID numbers for all of those comments. Then you have the name of that person who typed in the comment, name right here. Then you have the email of that person. Email would be typed in right here. And then you have the comment of what they wrote. Comment of what they wrote. But then we have another table called player ID. And this is very important because this links this to this table. And as you see, there's only numbers between one and six, and that's how many players that we have. So this means that this comment is for this player ID. So it will show it here. So here's another MySQL query that will only show information in comments for this particular player ID. But let's see if it actually works. Let's see if there's actually an insert that will insert the data here and put it into the database. And let's see if it can actually do it with Ajax as well so that the page doesn't even load. So if we typed in Jacob Morgan, and we typed in an email of morgan at jacob.com, and then we put a comment in as um, just checking to see if this guy doing these tutorials knows what he is doing. All right, so hopefully when we click submit, it will be able to take all of this information and put it into our MySQL database, but then also show it. So just checking to see if this guy knows what he's doing. When you click submit comment, all of a sudden, the user is told the comment has successfully submit and check it out, Jacob Morgan, just checking to see what you are doing. So all of this is done with JDBC. It's wicked cool stuff. And if we look into our um, into our database, if we click go again, and we look down here, Jacob Morgan, Morgan at Jacob.com, just checking to see what you are doing. So if you follow along with me from the very beginning, I'm going to show you how to do all of this wicked cool stuff. Trust me, I'm not going to leave you behind, and you're going to love this stuff. And it's so much cooler than using all those other different frameworks because you're going to really get to know exactly what you're doing. And if you make it, then fixing it later down the road will make it a whole lot easier. So I hope this demonstration has really helped to see exactly what you will be able to do with JDBC. And uh, I hope it was useful, and I really hope to see you guys in the next tutorial. So stay tuned. I'm going to teach you where to go from here.